I wake up at around four. Yeah. So the first thing I do, like to wake up and I'll fall back to sleep and I, I take a dry scoop of pre-workout. Oh, okay. You do <laughs> so, really? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the the mega one, the first form. Okay. So that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the one that I take and man, as soon as I I swallow that, it's like it just wakes me up. So <laughs> after that, you know, I get going, I start getting ready. Yeah. I change. And then I start reading. So I read my 10 pages first yeah. and then I hit, and then I hit the gym. Nice. So, yeah. So maybe by like six before six 30, I'm already done with the gym. Yeah. And then between like six 30 or so six 30 to like eight, eight 30, you know, I'm, I'm doing other things, you know, in my power list that I have for the day. <laughs> Irvin, you're an entrepreneur, CEO of Ratiz Electric. You're part of Arte Syndicate. You do some soccer playing. You're also the host of Breakthrough Society podcast. Much more, man. Thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. For sure, man. I'm excited to be here. I like to go back with my uh, shows. You know, I know that you started doing electrician work with your dad when you're like 10 years old. Where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you, man? Uh, well, I grew up in the deep south part of Texas, like 30 minutes away from the Mexican border. Okay. And uh, I mean, my dad has been a business owner he owns his own electrical company down there um but yeah i mean he always like raised me like to think like an entrepreneur you know he always said it's better to like own a business um instead of like working for somebody yeah. and he said he would always tell me like if you go in because i tried other stuff you know i tried uh working with a friend of his that was a mechanic but he said you know if you're gonna go in and you know like work for him as a mechanic like just go in there with like the vision that one day you're going to own your own like shop. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he always taught me like to, to just think about stuff like that. Um, like eventually, eventually have that vision and that drive to like, you know, own whatever, you know, whatever industry I'm in, you know, but yes, like you were saying, since 10 years old, he would just take me to the, to uh, the job sites during the summers, picking up the trash, getting the materials and tools from the van and taking them to him and his workers and, you know, that's how everything, you know, kicked off doing the, the little stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, eventually, like, I tried different stuff like that, like the um, mechanic and, you know, like some other, you know, like little side hustles, high side, <laughs> side hustles. But, yeah. you know, eventually I just fell back into it and I got all my licensing and stuff like that for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then when I was uh, 23, I believe it was 23, 2018. Um, that's when I moved uh, here to Houston and I started my, my own electrical company here. So it's been like two and a half years. Gotcha. Man, that's awesome, dude. I remember like, you know, being 10 years old, I was mowing yards <laughs> at 10 years old, like, yeah. you know, up the neighbor's house and stuff like that. And I remember my mom, she's like the entrepreneurial person that always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but she never took it serious. So she's still working for other people. Um, okay. and, and not that that's a bad thing. It's just funny that she would always say that. And I remember as a kid, she would say, if you just sold one million shirts with one dollar profit you'd be a millionaire i'm like oh, yeah. thanks mom. i appreciate that right you know like one of those type things <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know um uh, but you know like you mentioned you started your electrical business there at just 23 years old did you run into anyone questioning your experience or you know being that young and then launching this business and how did you get through that stuff yeah i mean well yeah that's that's the thing that's like one problem i had here in houston because if I would have stayed down in the, like where I'm from, which is like the, they call it the Rio Grande Valley. Okay. So if I would have stayed in that area, I already knew all the contractors that my dad worked for, I already knew like everybody in charge. So yeah. if I would have either like take over my dad's company or just be like a partner with them, um, then, you know, I would have more, you know, respect. Everybody, you know, knows me already. Everybody, like the contractors, the main guys would walk in. They'd be like, what's up? You know, they'd give me a handshake and stuff like that. But moving to Houston, you know, like, nobody knows me so I you know I came here and really like I, I didn't I came to play soccer I didn't come to start my company okay you know but like halfway into the first month you know I was just bored because all I would do is just play soccer and I'm like man let me just start looking for work you know get a little you know busy yeah and you know it kicked off like that so I just started pretty much like with no business plan no nothing so I didn't know anything I just like what my dad taught me you know so like that's how I started and I mean, yeah, like the first few times, um, like the first, you know, half that half a year, like the rest, the second half of that year, um, you know, I just, you know, went along with it, yeah. you know, like along wherever, wherever it was taking me. But yeah, like that was one difficulty is 
like every every client that I would meet, then you know they would ask me like, "Man, you're pretty young. How old are you?" Yeah, I'm 23. <laughs> you know, I yeah. started since, or they would ask me, "Since when have you been doing this?" Oh, since I was 10, and they'd be like, "What?" Right. <laughs> and I'd be like, "Yeah." You know, my and I would just tell them the story that my dad owned a company, owned his company, and I would work for him and this and that. And they'd be like, "Oh, that's cool." You know, but in the beginning, you know, you can see like their doubt that you know yeah. who, like who's this guy kind of thing like he's too young they tell right. me that now <laughs> a couple of, <laughs> i'm 26 now and yeah. they still tell me like how old are you like oh 26 oh you're pretty young and be like yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah it's just like that customers doubt in the in the beginning but i mean eventually you just like i didn't let it like bother me too much yeah you know I, I just like it's just something i had to deal with and i still have to go along with it you know if i want to get jobs if i want to sure. build a company you know bigger if i want to you know, make money and stuff like that. Well, I've been to your... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, because it's like the only like way that I was going to, you know, make money to live. So yeah. that's what I had to do. I've been to your website. It's very professionally done. And I've seen other electrician websites and they're yeah. not very <laughs> well done at all, man. So I really want to give you props because your website is stellar, dude. Um, and one of the things that I noticed on there was your core values, which I'm really, really excited about is you have this, you know, core values, go pursue, pursue growth, excuse me, pursue growth and learning. And Ed Milet, who I'm a big fan of, I won his max out challenge. You know, he talks about candy constant and, um, constant never ending improvement. You know, why are those core values that you have on your website so important to you? Um, that, that one's a big one Yeah, because it's like, if you're not growing, you're dying. I don't yes. know if you heard that. I'm pretty sure you, should, you heard that somewhere. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, if, if you like stay where you're at, like there's always going to be like that. Like if I, if I like stay where I'm at and I don't like improve in my knowledge, then, you know, there's going to, somebody younger than me is going to come that's hungrier than me and he's going to pass me up. And I'm over here yeah. thinking, you know, I'm already like up here, you know, I'm 26, I got my company or whatever, <laughs> you know, like yep. as long as I'm still learning, then, you know, I can pass people up that are, you know, older than me that think, that think like they're already up here, yep. you know? So then, so then I, if I'm like still learning, then I can pass people up. But if I stay like where I am and I don't, I don't read books, I don't improve, I don't, you know, listen to podcasts and all that stuff, then, you know, I'm going to have people passing me up. So yeah. like, I'm always like, like, there's always like a certain level that you have to get to, but mm -hmm. that level is like always going, you know, higher. Yep. Yeah. It always, always got to be growing. And and that probably ties into RTA syndicate, which you're part of there, but yeah. how has being part of RTA syndicate helped you in your business? Oh, it's great. Uh, not only has it helped me in my business, but just like in life in general, mm -hmm. because, um, like when, when you talk to people like in that group, people that are like minded, like myself, when you like talk to them, when you hang out with them, because I was at the at the unofficial meeting in Austin. OK, so so there was maybe like 30, 40 of us there. So when wow. you're like when you're surrounded by people like that, when you talk to them, when you just listen to them speak, it's just like these guys are. They're at another level, you know, so especially so, when you listen to guys like Tony Wally to Miguel, like you don't say you don't say anything like you just like you just listen, you know, Yeah. because like the knowledge that they have is just crazy. And it's like it makes you like think, you know, differently than 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 what you do, like when you're, you know, in, like your normal life, especially like when you're around like your family and the friends you grew up around, like it's very hard for somebody that's always around you to, you know, be at this like other level of thinking. Yep. So when you're like around people in Arte, like it's a whole nother level. So it just makes you want to be better, you know, makes you want to improve. It makes you like you're falling behind. So, you know, you're trying to catch up. <laughs> like that's how I feel all the time. Like I feel like I'm like down here <laughs> compared to everybody. And I'm just like, man, dude, like I got to catch up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always just trying to do like improve, trying to, and I still struggle sometimes, you know, but that's just, you know, part of the game. Yeah. I mean, and I think that also shows like you never want to be the smartest guy in the room. And Arte yeah. Syndicate man, has just amazing people. And and Tony's going to be on my show in just a couple of weeks. So, so I'm excited to nice. talk with him. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I had the honor of talking with Ed back in when I first launched this thing. And uh, just mind blowing, man, the knowledge that they, that they shared through Arte Syndicate. And of course, up here, like this is where I live in Coeur d'Alene. So he had one of his houses up here. It just hit the market for 27 million uh, last week or something like that, you know, or it's been on the market for a while. But uh, uh, as so, a lake house. Yeah, the lake house. Yep. OK. 
Yeah. So I, I uh, we rented pontoons this summer. Uh, my wife and I had some friends and we went right up to his dock right there. I'm like, oh, look at him at Ed's house. You know, like, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> try not to be the stalker guy, but I'm like, oh, yeah, look, yeah. look, there it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those things But uh, he talks about morning routines and sort of Andy Priscilla and things like that. And for me, I'm big on morning routines and making sure that it starts that day off. Right. But what's your morning routine look like, man? Uh, oh man. Um, usually, I mean, when, you know, I don't always, you know, my day doesn't always start perfectly, but yeah. when it does, <laughs> when it does, um, I wake up at around four. Yep. So the first thing I do like to wake up and I'll fall back to sleep and I, I take a dry scoop of pre-workout. Oh, okay. You do <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, the, the mega was the first form. Okay. So that's, yeah. Yeah. That's the one that I take and man, as soon as I, I swallow that, it's like, it just wakes me up. So <laughs> after that, you know, I get going, I start getting ready. Yeah. I change and then I start reading. So I read my 10 pages first yeah. and then I hit, and then I hit the gym. Nice. So, yeah. So maybe by like six, before six 30, I'm already done with the gym. Yeah. And then between like six 30 or so, six 30 to like eight, eight 30, you know, I'm, I'm doing other things, you know, in my power list that I have for the day, which is like things for work or I have to, you know, create estimates to send to the customers. You know, that's what I'm doing during that time, um, creating invoices, trying to schedule people uh, like to go meet. If I have a podcast, I'll probably record the podcast that day, yep. you know, or edit it or something like that. So like I try to do all of that before before I head out to work. Yeah, I'm there with you, man. I'm up at uh, 4 a.m. six days a week, man. And uh, I still work the nine to five, but I, uh, you know, I've been blessed to work from home for five years now. But so I wake up 4 a.m. Yeah. and work on my podcast and work on the edits and reaching out to guests and things like that. And the, that's my sweet zone, man, is that 4 a.m. to like 7 a.m. every day. The thing I had trouble with is like going to sleep. I can't oh, yeah. sleep early, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always end up falling asleep like at midnight. Even oh. if I'm in bed, yeah, yeah, even if I'm in bed, like, at 10, I'm just like, oh, yeah, 9, 10, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get some rest tonight. Right. I can't, I cannot go to sleep. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I used to be that night out guy, like, just staying up super duper late. I worked in the music business for a couple of years, or I wouldn't be going to bed till you know, 1, 2 a.m. every day. And then oh. <laughs> I got a job at Starbucks. I didn't even drink coffee till I worked at Starbucks. But I got this job at Starbucks in my early 20s. And they're like, hey, you're the new guy. You get to work at early. Be here at 4. And I was like, what? And then ever since then, for like 10 years now, I've been waking up at 4 a.m. But yeah. usually by 9.30 or 10, I'm out like a bold man. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I think I made it to 11 o'clock on New Year's this year. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I wish I was like that, dude. Like, just go to sleep early, man. Wake up. Uh, go to sleep. Yeah, go to sleep early. Wake up early. Yep. And just you know, hit the hit the books and stuff like that for the next day. For sure. I wanted to talk about your awesome podcast, man. It's the Breakthrough Society. Is that still the name that you write? Because I saw Badass Journey. Which one is it? Breakthrough Society. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, rebranded it, so okay. I had the Badass Journey when oh, I gotcha. started. When I started it in uh, June, around June. So, but. Like I started it back then, you know, I dropped like one episode June, another one in July. And then after that, I went ghost mode yeah. until about, I think it was like November or so. Okay. When I started to get back into it, you know, started posting consistently every Monday and every Friday, almost every Friday, but every Monday for sure. Okay. Um, and before I had my, uh, I had two guests, two guests right now, which was one of them was Alex Vanderhaar. Yeah. Yeah. The other Great one dude. was like, yeah, Kelly Keen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, before before I, I dropped those two guests, you know, I had to rebrand it, mm -hmm. you know. So okay. that's when I I switched it from the Badass Journey to the Breakthrough Society. Okay, I like that. And I just spoke to Alex earlier this week. I'm speaking I'm speaking to Callie here in just a couple of weeks, man. So that's nice. awesome. Yeah. yeah very um, knowledgeable. Yeah, I'm awesome, excited to, to sure. get some more information on those guys for sure, man. But, you know, for those who don't know about your podcast, you know, uh, why did you decide to launch that thing, man? Yeah, well, like I decided it to launch it because like the way that the way that that uh, podcast has helped ha helped me like just like shift that mindset. Right. So, yeah, like I initially started listening to podcasts in 2019, like February, March, 2019. 
and the first one was the MF CEO by Andy. Oh yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I like started it from episode one and I went all the way through. That's like the only thing that I would listen to. I stopped listening to music. That's the only thing that I would listen to all the time. Yeah. Um, and then I got into Gary V's podcast and like really those two guys and their podcast and all their content like just like smoked me out of you know me like half assing my business and all this thing. Yeah. And then like March, pretty much like when COVID lockdown, all this thing happened. That's like when I really like went all in on yep. the business. So like since their podcast helped me a lot, like I knew that podcasts, you know, were helpful. So, you know, I used it to help the people, like especially like the people around me, people that don't grow up around, you know, people at this other like level of thinking. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like that's that's the reason that that uh that I started the podcast pretty much. Yeah, I selfishly love to just like get knowledge, right? So I can like I want to talk to awesome people like yourself that are out there running businesses and and kicking yeah. butt in life, man. And so it's like <laughs> it's almost selfish. I'm like, oh, do I I get to talk to this guy, man? It's just one on one. And then, but I'm like, oh, but it, they could make such an impact on the listeners, man, if they just took a listen. So yeah, for sure, man. I'm I'm there with you. Like, you know, I, I, podcast helped me a ton. I'm like, man, if it's helping me, then I want to get people on here that can help other people, man. And and it's kind of this awesome circle. I think of just sharing knowledge for sure yeah 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 i feel you and it's not like like whenever i started even now like i get like i'm on i told zach you know zach right yeah 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 so like i told zach i was like man dude like podcasting and recording like it makes me uncomfortable like talking sure like, being on video talking like it all makes me uncomfortable okay. but i i know like i know like eventually like you know throughout as like the the episodes you know go by and stuff like that it's going to make me better eventually. Yep. And oh, I'm totally. going to look back and I'm going to be like, oh man, you know, these first ones sucked. You know, now I'm like, you know, I'm good at it, you know, but yep. for sure, like it makes me uncomfortable, but I know it can help people as well. So that's really like my, my main focus on it too. Like I don't try to, you know, like I don't let it affect me. The fact yep. that, you know, I'm uncomfortable doing it, but like, I like it though. Like I like that little like adrenaline and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like, I still like doing it. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. I actually when I started my other podcast, the Top Rated MMA, I started that in 2017. Had no idea what I was doing. I bought this little cheap camera, a little cheap yeah. snowball <laughs> mic, right? We didn't have a place in the in our house for me to do it, so I did almost my first hundred episodes in a walk-in closet, dude. Like you know, like <laughs> not even look at the camera. Horrible lighting, <laughs> you know. I'm like now I've upgraded obviously to the mic a few times. Yeah. I've upgraded the camera and I've got some lights in here now. But I mean, almost a hundred episodes in a walk-in closet, and you know I'd have to like tell the kids, okay, I'm recording. I have this like recording sign on the outside of the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it but won't bother the, you. Right. You totally <laughs> we've moved the my office around like three times in the last five years to like get us into the room. And now I'm finally up above the garage where I have my work office and the studio nice. here in the same room. So now I don't have to worry about them being loud or anything like that. So yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I want to do a transition to some fun questions here. I'm a music guy. You kind of talked about you don't really listen to music too much, but is there a favorite type of music or favorite band that you like? Yeah. Yeah. Well now I like, you know, I I do listen to music. Oh, nice. it's, it's now like, you know, half and half, but it was like yeah. when I was getting started to podcast, I'm like, man, this is good, you know? Yep. So like I really wanted to improve. So like I would just focus, focus on listening to podcasts. But now I do listen to music, but I mean, I listen to a lot. My mainly like the genre is like rap, hip hop. Yep. That's, like the uh, Wiz Khalifa back there behind yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite artists for sure. Um, Like, yeah, the rap and hip hop, I listen to some country not too much yeah i listen to some rock um the same thing not too much but yeah my mind is just you know rap hip-hop gotcha uh, entrepreneur question here for you does it take money to make money uh yeah it does it does yeah for yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah yeah i was thinking because i was like i know there's some people that say you know like in real estate you don't need money to start um but i don't know the real estate you know, market. Eventually, yeah. I would like to get into it this year. But um, like when I started, so I started. You know, I had to buy you know some tools for sure because it's like you need them for the job. Yep. Um, I, like the way that I started getting leads was I was paying for them for this this uh like referral company. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had to pay for the leads before I even got the jobs. So, gotcha. Like it did it did take me money to 
to like start making money. Yep. Yep. For sure. Uh, now you're an extremely healthy guy. Like I said, you play soccer, you're with first form and stuff like that, but we all have this sweet tooth. What's a, what's your go-to cheat meal for you, man? Oh man. I love wings. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> like these Buffalo. So whenever I do like 75 hard, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't, I don't need pizza. I don't need, you know, wings, stuff like that. But as soon yeah. as I'm off of it man, the Buffalo wings, hot, hot Buffalo wings. Yeah. yeah. That's like my favorite thing. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm the same. I actually, I tried to do the 75 hard. And for me, it was tough. I have kids and things like that. So it was tough to get away for another 45 minutes after work to do that second workout. Yeah. And so last year in May, uh, May 15th, I started this thing. I called it the 4590. Essentially, it was 45 minutes of cardio for 90 days straight. I had this dad bod. I hit 199 pounds when I turned 40 in December of, you know, uh, 20, uh, 20. Was it? No, sorry. Uh, 2019 is when I turned 40. I'm getting so old. I don't remember. Um, but uh, like, I, I was like, dude, I got to get rid of this dad bod. So I was like, I, I couldn't do the 45, the, excuse me, the 75 hearts. So I was like, I'm just going to do 45 days, uh, 45 minutes of cardio for 90 days straight, cutting out everything. I didn't even eat a potato chip. And I went from 199 to 168 pounds uh, uh-huh. in 90 days and been able to like keep that dad bot off now and then kind of, I, I think I put on a little bit of weight during the Christmas break, but other yeah. than that, dude, we're back on the, you know, back on the, the streak of, of eating healthy and things like that. But yeah, dude, that's 75 hard, man. Props to you. Cause that's yeah. so tough to do, man. It that's is awesome. it. Yeah. And I, and I finished it, um, December 23rd. So like right before Christmas. Okay. <laughs> that was my goal. Like try to finish it before the year. Yeah. Cause I actually, well, I actually like did, I guess completed somehow. Okay. Uh, like during the summer, but then you know how the, Andy came out with that book. Yep. So then I bought the book, I read it. And then I figured out that my soccer practice didn't count as the workout. Okay. So I was like, Oh shit. So, you know, I guess I didn't do it. Right. So, so that, yeah. So then I had to do it again. So okay. then I really, I really did do it now. And, and I finished it December 23rd. Come on, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Urban, such an honor to have you on my show, man. Your story is so awesome, and I love that you've got this business just kicking butt out there. Love your podcast, man. Absolute world changer, man. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Really appreciate taking the time, man. Yeah, for sure, man. It's been fun. I liked it. Thank you so much for watching the show today. I appreciate it. If you could, please leave a rating and review on our Apple podcast. The link is down below. That helps us get our message out, get the show out, helps us get ranked out there on the Apple podcast. Also, leave a comment below, man. I'd love to know what part of the show made the most impact on you. I respond to every comment on there. And please share this video, whether you're watching on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, please share it out. We want to make sure that we impact as many people as we can with the guests that come on my show and highlight those guests and what they've got going on and they're changing the world. So thank you so much for the time. So appreciate it. Have an awesome day.